Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK as part of IBM Europe. This movie is about workload partitions, or WPAR for short, and application mobility, where we move these WPARs between machines. This is all part of AIX6. In the next movie, we'll look at how to move workload partitions between Power 4, Power 5 and Power 6 machines. OK, we're going to move a partition, WP13, from a Power 5 machine to a Power 6 machine. Let's pretend we don't understand what sort of machines we're actually running on currently. Here we have WP13 and it's on SSC25. If we click on the Manage Systems we can go and find out what sort of system they actually are. Here we go, SSC25, we'll click on here and we have in the description that it's a Power 5 machine but that could be wrong of course. Further down here we have, it knows, the uh, Workload Partition Manager knows that it's a Power 5 machine at 1.5 gigahertz. Let's go back and up here I happen to know this P10 partition is a Power 6 machine running at 4.7 gigahertz. So let's go back to the partition. We'll go back to the partition here and uh, click on this and we'll ask, instead of doing a relocate, we'll actually ask what nodes are compatible with the machine we're currently running on. This will do a check and say this particular partition, WP13, that's currently running on SSA25, uh, can be moved to any one of these and we find that that P10 partition is not there because it is not compatible. We have a Power 5 machine and a Power 6 machine. Now it's not compatible because each of the uh, different power machines has some unique features, some instructions that only work on that particular chipset. This means that if your application has tested and it cares, you can find out uh, the particular instructions that are particular Power 5 or Power 6 chip can actually operate and using those perhaps for extra performance. If we go and change the chip underneath the application it will suddenly find that uh, instructions that it thought were valid and would uh, help it are actually now invalid instructions and would crash the application. So that's why we don't allow just moving straight from a Power 5 to a Power 6 machine for example. So how could we actually do it? Let's go back to our list of applications here. We can't do the relocation directly, so we'll have to do it, and we can't do it while it's active, so we'll have to do that with the workload partition stopped. So we'll click our partition here, and we'll stop it. Now I happen to know there's no programs actually running on this W part at the moment, so I'll do a very quick stop, a full stop. We've gone transitional here and we've stopped it now, we're in defined. At the moment then, the workload partition is defined on this particular machine, SSC25, and not running. But I want to take this definition off this Power 5 machine while it's stopped. So again, I'll select this partition and we'll remove it from this machine. Now we actually want the contents of the file systems here, so we'll ask it for them to be preserved, but we won't ask the partition manager to remove the definition from the database because we actually want to use this, and we've already stopped it by hand so we don't have to ask it to be stopped. Doing this operation will move from the defined state into the undeployed state. This should only take uh, a few seconds. Undeployed state rather. Now the workload partition manager understands how to run this, but it's not actually on a machine. We see it's blank here. So now we want to deploy this on the Power 6 machine. So we'll deploy. We'll put in our node here. It finds it for us. We don't want to force it onto the machine. It should go on happily. We will ask it to uh, start it automatically once it's deployed and we want to present again preserve the 
file system. So we have the contents of the workload partition. Note here we could also set the uh, password to a new password for the root user of the workload partition. Very useful feature. Again we've gone transitional here. It's now teaching our P10 node about this partition which will define it, create the amount points for example and once it's been defined we should be able to go and start it up and there we go, we've gone active we asked the uh, workload manager to start the application as soon as it was deployed so it went from undeployed to defined and up to active in one go in the next movie we're going to look at the workload partition properties and how we can change these.